What's going on guys and welcome to my first episode of career mode in FIFA 14. Now I just want to say uh, if you are a new viewer to this series, a new viewer to this channel, then feel free to click that subscribe button because I will be posting FIFA 14 videos every single day and uh, if you want to see a good long career mode series, well I'm sure my existing subscribers will be happy to tell you that my last career mode series in FIFA 13 lasted 276 episodes. So um, feel free to hit that subscribe button if you're a big fan of career modes that uh, do tend to last but uh, anyway guys yeah uh, the first career mode of FIFA 14 on my channel and hopefully the only uh, career mode if uh, my save file decides to last this time and not corrupt but um, yeah we're starting at Norwich in this career mode we're starting at Norwich um, my subscribers decided to vote this team up the most so Norwich is the team that we'll be starting with uh, for this career mode here in FIFA 14 I'm, I'm looking forward to it I'm looking forward to it it should be good fun uh, last year we started with Blackburn in the championship this time we're staying with Norwich, uh, of course, in the Premier League. Um, uh, two seasons in the Premier League now going into their third. Um, a, a good, strong side, Norwich. Chris Hewton has made some fantastic signings in real life. And as you've seen here, I have downloaded the latest squad. So that does mean that uh, the newest signings will be available to use uh, straight away. So, um, yeah, there's a few things I want to discuss as we get into this career mode. And uh, those are the sort of things that I'm planning for this series. Now, uh, this career mode is a bit of a traditional career mode. There's no kind of a objectives, there's no kind of goals, I'm not going to be saying that you know we have to stay at a team for the whole series like a project or you know we, we have to move teams every season or every two seasons, it's just a traditional uh, career mode series in the sense that we're going to be playing uh, just as you guys would at home, just playing for fun and uh, of course documenting our progress as we go along um, and hopefully an episode every single day if not then every other day or every few days but um, yeah starting with Norwich and uh, as you can see the, the career mode aspect for those of you that have played career mode before has changed a little bit there's a few new things to it and uh, as you can see here uh, the emails are all in sort of one folder now you don't just um, get rid of them and then you never see them again you can keep them if you want and uh, there is a global transfer network which we're going on to now. Um, now I should say I've been playing career mode for the past few hours, just got this footage here for the first episode um, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of the global transfer network, it's obviously a new feature, uh, you use scouts, of course we had scouts, youth scouts in the last uh, last FIFA game uh, FIFA 13, but uh, these are scouts for real players, you know, proper players that are in the game, I'm not a big fan of it so we're going to sort of uh, mix between using the global transfer network, using the scouts and also searching for players that we already know about in real life so uh, we're going to sort of do a mix it's not going to be all through global transfer network it's not going to be all through uh, searching for the players manually we're going to do a little bit of a mix just to uh, uh, spice it up a little bit and have a bit of variety but uh, anyway we do uh, use the search feature to look for our first player and um, with Norwich uh, we've, we've got a very good squad here at Norwich there's uh, some good players some good uh, strength and depth but uh, I have noticed there's only four strikers and uh, to be honest they're all pretty decent Van Volkswinkel and Elmander uh, Becchio and uh, no oh Hooper that's what I was thinking. There's four strikers there. Van Volkswink, Almanda, Hooper and Becchio. They're decent strikers, but we can have some better ones. And uh, that's why I'm going in for Yaya, uh, Yaya Sanigo on loan from Arsenal. Good, strong, tall uh, striker who uh, could be a decent loan signing for us. Won't cost us too much money because we've only got £6.5 million to work with. That's not a lot. And of course, with the Global Transfer Network, you do have to pay for your scouts as well. But uh, here you see me in the Global Transfer Network. Just, just getting a little bit of a feel for it. You know, it's the first time I was going into it. Just getting a little bit of a feel for it, seeing what I'm doing here, looking at the scouts, seeing what I've got to do. And uh, as you as you saw there, I, I, I choose categories for what my scouts are going to do, uh, what type of player they're going to look for, and then I send one of my scouts out to look in England for that type of player. So basically, all you do with the Global Transfer Network is you look for a type of player, you know, like a winger in, in a position, like a winger or a centre half, and then you specify what type of they, uh, type of player they are. So are they quick? Are they tall? Are they strong? Can they uh, shoot from range and so on and so forth? But um, you just saw there as well, Arsenal accepted a loan offer for Yaya Sanigo. That's good news for because Sanigo is a very decent young striker and that is good but uh, we get the first scout report back from the Global Transfer Network I won't be showing every single scout report I won't be showing you every single update on every single player but uh, at the beginning I will be doing a little bit of that just to show you what it's like for those of you that are new and uh, for those of you that haven't seen a Global Transfer Network on any other videos on YouTube before so as you can see uh, my scout returns me all these players that have matched the, um, the, the search filters that I asked for so I asked for a winger I asked for a centre half and uh, the scout returns 
concerns these players that were in uh, that uh, type of filter. Of course, the better scout you have, the better players they'll pick up, and uh, the better better judgment they'll have on that player and on their attributes. So um, it is just like scouting in FIFA 13 for youth players. However, this one is for real players, and um, it's pretty simple to be honest. I'm I'm not a big fan of it, like I say, but um, even so, I'm sure in time we'll get used to it. It is a new thing, so I'm sure in time we'll get used to it, and um, it should be a very good feature to have. But like I say, we'll be doing I will be jumping back and forth from you know real life searches to players we already know about to uh, using the global transfer network. Um, he see us going. Uh, John Ruddy gets a couple of bids there. We reject them both. Not interested in selling John Ruddy. He's a top goalkeeper. I don't want to get rid of him. And uh, Luke Shaw here. Like I say, we're going to be searching back and forth. You know, we're going from searching players we know about manually and then using the global transfer network. Luke Shaw is a quality player, so um, we'd like to get hold of Luke Shaw and uh, we inquire about him and see what happens. But uh, I decided to go in and uh, have a go at the filters again, just to tweak it around a little bit, just to get used to it. Like I say, give the scouts more of a, you know, more of a variety of a player they can go for and. Um, I look for a prolific striker here because, uh, like I said, we don't have too many forwards and uh, I like to get hold of a decent forward, so hopefully we can get one there. Uh, that becomes our third search filter, I thought that was. And we also got a transfer over here from uh, Sampdoria for Anthony Pilkington, who's a, a decent player. I do like Pilkington, but uh, Sampdoria come in for him. Uh, we decide to ask for 2.5 million. That's £600,000 more than his actual valuation, but he is a good player. Can play on the wing and through the middle, so um, wouldn't mind keeping hold of Pilkington, but uh, if we can get 2.5 million for him I'll be very pleased indeed but uh, once again we go into the uh, global transfer network here uh, and look at the uh, filters just just to get a, uh, like again uh, we can use six filters but um, I don't want to use them all at one time but um, just to uh, just to add a couple more in just to sort of uh, give the scouts more of more of something to work with, I suppose, because if you only have two or three, they're going to come up empty after a few weeks. So um, give them something more to work with. And we look for a central midfielder here. Uh, he could be a bit of a box-to-box -box playmaker, and that would be very nice indeed. But uh, we also go and send our second of three scouts out here. Uh, this one goes to France, I do believe, to take a look at the uh, French leagues and see uh, if he can pick us up any of those players that uh, uh, meet that criteria. Uh, so I do believe we send him to France. Yes, we do. So he goes to France, and hopefully you'll be able to pick us up a decent player that have some of those filters. But um, anyway, Sampdoria come back to us here and say that they are going to match the £2.5 million bid for Anthony Pilkington that we requested. So that's pretty decent. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. I mean, like I say, Pilkington's a good player, uh, pretty of a versatile player as well. He's only 25, so he's still got uh, room to grow. But uh, 2.5 million is quite a bit of decent money for a club that doesn't have too much money. And we could do with investing uh, that money into different areas of the squad, such as a striker role. So, um, you know, I'm not going to be too, uh, too annoyed if he does go, but I would like to keep hold of him. But, um, Here's another scout report. Like I say, not going to show this all the time, but um, just to show you a little bit, just to get you a feel to it, this is how it works. Um, Billy Sharp as well. Now, uh, this is something, this is a player that my uh, scout came back with, and uh, I really like Billy Sharp in real life. He's a really, really, really decent player, and uh, we inquire um, uh, Pochettino at Southampton. We say, how much do you want for Billy Sharp? And he says, 2.5 million pounds, but I'm sure his translator said that to us. Uh, 2.5 million pounds. Uh, we decide to offer 1.75 million, because I really like Billy Sharp. I think he's a really good player. I think he's a fantastic uh, finisher of the ball. So I'd like to get Billy Sharp in. He may not be the type of player that's going to come in, be our first choice striker for years and years. But as a player that comes off the bench and, you know, plays in the cup games, I think Billy Sharp could be a very decent acquisition for us because he's not going to cost us too much money. And like I say, Billy Sharp to me is the type of player that, you know, you know he's going to get you goals. You know, you know, you know he's going to get you goals. So um, Sharp coming in would be a very decent deal for us. And uh, especially because we haven't got too much money to work with. But uh, again, yeah, we get a, a bit of a, a look for the feel here of the Global Transfer Network. We get another scout report there. Uh, that time it was on Sean Morrison. And uh, transfer talks, unfortunately, broke down between Pilkington and Sampdoria, which means we will not be getting the £2.5 million. But um, I'm not too bold, because like I say, Pilkington's a decent uh, decent player, very versatile across the midfield, so um, that's fine with me. Uh, Reading uh, said they wanted £1.7 I think it was, for Sean Morrison. Nigel Atkins asked for that, and I was like, no way, mate. Take a million off it, and I'll say yes. But um, we have to wait and see because Morrison would just be a squad player but uh, there you go uh, but uh, here is Andros Townsend skin him town skin him towns uh, Andros Townsend of course was uh, a very popular player in my last two career mode series and uh, Spurs um 
we inquired Spurs uh, to see if we could uh, bid them for Andros Townsend and uh, collect this player. But uh, for some reason, it said that uh, zero pounds was uh, a good deal on the uh, on the little thing there. Apparently, that's a bug, so don't worry about that. But we offered 2.5 million uh, for Andros Townsend, which is a pretty decent deal because that's under his valuation. And um, he's, like I say, a very, very good player. He's rapid, he's pacey, he's only 22 years old, so he could be a decent player. But uh, we offer a contract to Billy Sharp there. Like I say, uh, really do hope I can get Billy Sharp in because I think he's a very decent striker and I think as a, a backup striker he could be very decent for us but uh, Spurs and Andre Villas-Boas accept the transfer offer we made for Towns it was 2.5 million pounds that is under his valuation by 300 grand I think it is so that would be a very decent deal for us but uh, Carlo Nash then comes to us uh, a 39 year old goalkeeper we have um, and says he's considering retiring at the end of the season I was like mate do what you want you're never going to get into my side anyway but uh, we get a transfer offer here for Wes Houlihan uh, it's Aston Villa who want to take him he's 30 31 years old. He's 75 rated, so he's a decent player. But um, to be honest, I'm you know I'm not utterly convinced he's going to get into my side all the time, and uh, I'm not utterly convinced by him. So if they want to take him, they can. But uh, Reading and Nigel Atkins go ahead and reject the offer for Sean Morrison, which is fine. Like I say, I was uh, to be honest, all I was doing there was just trying to show you how the global transfer network is working this year. And uh, to be honest, I wasn't really that interested anyway. So I'm not going to go ahead and uh, put in a second bid for him, and that is that. But um, anyway, we take on Hellas Verona uh, for the first game in this career mode in the pre-season friendlies uh, here at Caro Road for the first one of three and uh, well how about this for some shambolic defending on world class you would have seen there we're starting on world class in this series uh, some shambolic defending by Verona they just throw the ball to uh, Ricky Van Volswinkel runs through and uh, Van Volswinkel passes the ball to Johan Almanda who, pa who passes the ball into the empty net really it was a simple finish the goalkeeper wasn't very uh, very well positioned and uh, in general it was a sloppy sloppy goal for the opposition to concede so uh, we take a 1-0 victory a very very simple win it was a very very you know uh, how do I explain it uneventful I wasn't going to say boring uneventful game uh, nothing really happened we get a 1-0 win and uh, that is the main thing so I was pleased with that win uh, Almanda with the opening goal of the series and that is very nice indeed. But so we get transfer over here for one of our fullbacks. He's 19, 51 rated. I don't think we're ever going to need him. So he goes for a very small transfer fee, but don't need him. But uh, then we get Billy Sharp signing for us. And that's fantastic news because Sharp is, uh, like I say, uh, well, I'm not going to keep going around in circles. He's a very, very decent forward. And I'm, I'm pleased to get him in for 1.75 million. And then straight after that, we get the third uh, signing of the career so far. And that is Andros Townsend, who comes in for 2.5 million pounds again under his value. Valuation. So two players that come in for under their valuation, uh, they will link up with uh, Yaya Sanigo, who was the first signing. So uh, those three players, they could be very decent for us. You know, they may not always get in the squad and always be first team. I think Townsend will probably be my first choice winger, but. Um, <clears throat> You know, Sharp and Sanigo, uh, two decent strikers to sit on the bench and uh, be pretty decent for us. But um, anyway, we inquire uh, uh, Nigel Atkins for another one of his centre halves. He must be getting sick of us trying to poach all his centre backs. But uh, we inquire for, I think it was Alex Pierce there, and uh, see what happens. But uh, we do sell uh, Ewan McNeil to Bohemians for 25 grand. And then Wes Houlihan goes for substantially more money uh, to Aston Villa for £1.8 million. Pounds. We get rid of two players there, uh, and that is very good news for us. And then Nigel Atkins says, we want four. 4.7 million for Alex Pierce and I was like mate just forget it I'm not even bothered I just decided to delete the email and not even reply back and say no but uh, there you go we have the second pre-season friendly here uh, away in Germany against a team who we came up against a lot of times in my last career mode series and as I said many times I can't pronounce their second name I think it's Borussia Mönchengladbach but that's all I know how to say but uh, anyway uh, in the 15th minute we had the first chance of the game when Towns picks the ball up here Skinnim Towns uh, plays the ball to Johnson who plays a lovely ball out wide to Stephen Whitaker. Uh, the Scottish fullback plays the ball through to Leroy Fur, a new signing from FC Twente, who crosses the ball in, and there is... Billy Sharp. A goal on his day before Billy Sharp. Like I say, this is exactly why I signed the guy. You know, it's not exactly the hardest finish in the world. It's a free header. It's eight yards out. But at the end of the day, he's in that box. He's making himself aware. He's getting into good positions and he finishes the ball. So Sharp, on his debut, gets the only goal of the game. And I was very, very pleased about that because, as I've said before, he may not be a world-class striker, but you know he's going to get your goals. And that's exactly what Billy Sharp does there. As we make it two wins from two in the preseason so far and two clean sheets as well, which is very nice indeed. But uh, we get another scout update here 
one, Luke Shaw, and I should say as well, this is a little bit laggy. Um, this is the early access, of course, and it is a little bit laggy, so uh, be a bit patient if you see me flicking between the two players and trying to select one of them. So uh, it is a little bit laggy, so I do apologise for that. But um, regardless of such, uh, we got a scout report on Luke Shaw here, and he looks very decent. I mean, we all know who Luke Shaw is. That's why you saw me going for him on the search. We all know who Luke Shaw is. He's a very, very decent player, and um, I'd like to get hold of Luke Shaw. He'll probably cost us too much money uh, that we don't have. I mean, we spent two and a half on Towns, spent 1.75 on Billy Sharp, got uh, Sanigo on loan, and then, of course, we only have six and a half million to work with, so we probably aren't going to be able to afford him, but uh, even so, it'll be a very good signing for us because our fullback area isn't exactly that strong. But uh, we take on Barcelona for the third and final preseason friendly here, and the last game, the last piece of action in the episode, and uh, I was fearing the worst in this game. I thought we'd get completely hammered, but um, my defending was poor, but Barcelona with the best chance of the game, <laughs> terrible, terrible defending. I do apologise. Failed to make the most of it. The ball got cleared, and the game finished nil-nil. So, you know, a nil-nil in a third and final preseason friendly games. You know, un undefeated in preseason. That's all I can say, and I'm very pleased about that indeed. But, um... As always guys, a big thank you for watching today's video, I really hope you've enjoyed the first episode of my new career mode series, and a reminder for those of you that may be new to my channel, feel free to click that subscribe button because I will be uploading daily FIFA videos to this channel both offline and online. So thanks for watching, and look forward to seeing you for episode number 2 of career mode very soon.